Okay, Yang Gang, we've had an interesting couple of days. We had Steyer drop. We had Clubs and Pete. Now, Pete got the call from the DNC. He didn't do that out of the gracious of his heart and to do the right thing for the party. He got the knock, and he answered the door. Uh, he's playing like a good boy. Klobuchar, who knows, but you notice I've never mentioned these people in any of my videos. The only people I mention in my videos are the ones that matter. Biden, Bernie, Bloomberg. That's it. That's what this race has always been about. That's why I wanted to ally Andrew with Biden. I put a mashup video together yesterday, put it out, try to get a hashtag going uh, to show Biden that Andrew is the right pick for VP. It is definitely not Kamala. Now, that's just an identity politics pick, and that makes me sick seeing it from the outside. You Democrats might be used to this identity politics stuff, but us from the other side, we're not. And I'm going for the right policy pick, not identity politics. I thought Biden's biggest problem was going to be with Bloomberg. Who would have seen in a million years Bloomberg would tank so hard on the campaign? On the debate stage. I mean, he can't speak human. He's trying to get elected by humans, but he can't turn that robot speak into speaking human. It's the death nail, buddy. You're out. Just drop. What you need to do and what you're going to do, I would trust that you're going to do it before Super Tuesday, but my feelings are your ego won't allow you to do that, and you don't care about that knock on the door from the DNC because you have all the money. And in politics, that means you're the god. But after Super Tuesday, when you falter big time, we all know you're going to go ahead and throw yourself out. Then what you need to do is put your funds behind the center lane of your party. And by your party, I mean the Democrat party, because you haven't really been a Democrat, but that's cool. So what you need to do is drop out as soon as possible, put your funding behind the center lane. That center lane, obviously, is Biden. And if Biden's smart, he'll make Andrew Yang his VP nominee. Bring in the younger vote. He already has the older vote consolidated. It'll be the obvious smart move. And honestly, Yang Gang, that move is going to be the only move that's going to capture my vote for the Democrat Party. I don't want Andrew in some kind of a cabinet position under any other Democrat. I don't want him to start a office of technology, anything like that. I think it's a good idea, but I don't want to have another president in office with another vice president that's going to have the leg up over Andrew come next election season 2024. My main goal, my only goal, is for Andrew Yang to become president. And I'm going to use my vote and my campaigning to only further that move. Now understand, 100%, I am Yang Gang. If I do start openly campaigning for Trump, I'm going to do it with my math hat on. I'm going to spread that message through MAGA country to make sure that come 2024, when we're all done with Trump and we're all Trump orphans, that we need to throw our support behind Andrew Yang. So if that does happen, I hope you guys stick with me. It's all for the betterment of the movement. Again, my end goal, my only goal, is for an Andrew Yang presidency. Now I'm going to wait to see what his uh, big announcement is on Thursday. It's not going to have anything to do with any kind of a vice president nomination. Perhaps it has something to do with a coalition he's putting together to help fund local races under the UBI caucus. I think that's a great idea. We need him to stay at CNN. Maybe even pop over to Fox if the CNN thing turns sour. That way we can get more and more crossover support. So to recap, Yang Gang, understand, I am Yang Gang all the way. Even if I'm going for Trump, it's better than Bernie. And I don't want to see any Bernie supporters coming on this video or on this tweet saying, why not Bernie? I'll tell you why not Bernie. Because he has terrible policies, he has terrible ideas. You don't institute expensive social policies with improper funding mechanisms. What you're going to do is you're going to bankrupt this country. But you're never going to get the ideas passed anyway. It's a big waste of time. Having these expensive programs without the proper funding mechanisms, it's only going to cause debt. And that causes inflation. Taxing everybody for silly things like eliminating college debt, that's going to slow down innovation. It's going to slow down the innovators that are going to make us number one. We're right now competing with China in tech, in AI, in 5G. It's very important to understand this. If we fall behind China, they're going to be the ones calling the shots. If we avoid silly revolution attempts during a pivotal time in our country's history, it's going to be the better. It's going to be the right play. So Biden, Andrew, I hope you guys get together and announce soon a partnership, a Biden-Yang ticket, Biden-Yang 2020. I first made this call on the day you dropped out. I was on uh, with Boyce at Mindful Skeptics Podcast. I highly suggest everybody go check him out. I think it's a very underrated channel. He has some great content, does a lot of live stream, uh, what he calls Yang Gang Hangs, and it's a great way for us to stay together and keep our message out. 
So that's about it. All the people that we thought were going to drop out are dropping out, as they should. I'm glad the Democrats didn't fall for the Pete message. That was the most ridiculous, empty suit of a politician I've ever seen. And I'm surprised he got as far as he did just because he had some funding behind him. It was pretty ridiculous. All right, Yang gang, peace out. Andrew Yang was asked about uh, whether he'd consider being serving as vice president specifically mm -hmm. for Joe Biden. Let's take a listen. I will say the only person who's taken me aside and said that we need to really worry about the fourth industrial revolution because it uh, could potentially tear our country apart is Joe Biden. Joe Biden pulled you aside. That's an intriguing. Would you serve on a Biden ticket? You said you were open to anything. I, I'm, I'm definitely open to working with Joe. We've actually talked about it. Wow. wow. Actually talked about yeah. it. Wow. <laughs> that was interesting, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's just pretty much said, yeah, when I'm, whenever I drop out, I'm just jumping over to the Biden camp and jumping on his plane. I mean, it, here's, and I think I mentioned it earlier, Andrew Yang brings a lot to the ticket, to a Biden ticket, mm -hmm. balances youthfulness, balances uh, diverse, uh, yeah. ethnic diversity, yeah. Yeah. balances that business um, mindedness. One year ago, I spoke here at Davos about the challenges we face mastering the fourth industrial revolution which will be a topic of this forum for the next 10 years. About how can we ensure the benefits and the burdens of globalization, digitalization, artificial intelligence are shared more equitably. Advanced technology has divorced productivity from labor, meaning we're making more than ever with fewer and fewer workers. We can't undo the changes in technology as wrought in our world, nor should we try. But we can and we must take action to mitigate the economic trends that are stoking unrest in so many advanced economies and undermining people's basic sense of dignity. That path forward is a VP nod from Joe Biden. Now, Joe, you know you've fallen out of the good graces of the establishment. Uh, you used to be the darling, but you're not anymore. Uh, you still can grab that, but you have to act quickly. Now, I know it's unorthodox to announce a running mate this early, but you have to start thinking outside the box. There's a lot of people who I think uh, feel like they're being left behind because we're in the middle of something else going on here. Nothing to do with Donald Trump. We're in, in the middle of what I call, other people call the fourth industrial revolution. Is, are, is there gonna be middle class where, you know, Moore's law, the IT, the way we're walking, you know, artificial intelligence. Uh, look what's happened with all the retail jobs that got lost because of Amazon. Now people go to Amazon and so all across the country, a couple hundred thousand people lost their jobs and people are worried. Truck drivers I talked to are saying, well, you know, they're going to automate trucking. I know and I'm not going to have a job. I'm going to 52 years old. I'm making $80,000 a year. I'd say I've had the most interactions with Joe. He actually came to me and said, He's very concerned about the fourth industrial revolution and that if we automate away the jobs, uh, it's going to be a fundamental threat to the middle class. And that made me really excited because I was like, wow, Joe uh, is listening. It kind of feels like maybe a soft VP invite if things don't work out for you. Would you be open to being Joe's number two? I want to be the nominee myself, but if I, I'm part of the team, um, I'll do my part for sure. And what's going to help you win is announcing that your running mate is going to be Andrew Yang. He brings great ideas, and I know you like him, and I know you think he's smart, and I know you are now conscious of the fourth industrial revolution, and it is real. You and Yang, it's a winning ticket. And so we're going to have to consider new ways of thinking about these problems, like a universal income. UBI, universal basic income. You almost ran on the beginning of a universal basic income in America, what mm. you were going to call Alaska for America. Right. And one of the things I said uh, the other night was that Mike obviously can bankroll any candidate he chooses. He chose himself. But if he drops out, then I think he would put his money behind the strongest moderate, which at this point is clearly Joe Biden. I've uh, spoken before and after Joe maybe dozens of times, and mm. that was the best I've ever seen yeah. him. You know, I think the intro when it says that uh, you know Joe and Joe knows you, I, I think the essence of that was you had the sense that Joe cares about you in America, which he does very deeply. I feel like if Bernie represents anger and revolution, Bloomberg represents wealth and managerial competence, at least, you know, to some measure, I feel like Biden is carrying empathy and patriotism. And if he's able to demonstrate that in a way that's not talking about how he's going to win, but actually just showing yeah. those qualities, yeah. I think this has a chance to be a transformative moment.
I do think that the most important thing to do is what Barack and I did. And that is to pick someone who you know is simpatico with you, know is intellectually consistent with your positions. You may disagree on tactic, but strategically agree on everything. Because no president, man or woman, elected next time out can do the job by themselves. They've got to be able to delegate significant responsibility. The president, as has been written a lot about, we are personally very close, but he, de he delegated significant responsibility to me because he can't handle it all. And when he did, he gave me presidential authority. I could do what needed to be done. And I didn't have to go back and check because he knew we were on the same page. And so whomever fits that bill, and obviously it would be, uh, I, I'd be I, I wouldn't hesitate to pick uh, a woman or an African-American or someone who fit the bill that, uh, um, that would be, again, consistent with what I believe and had the same passion for it that I did. Thank you. I just want to share something that Joe said to me. I don't think I'm breaking any confidence. So Joe's a gentleman. Uh, this was during one of, or actually maybe during one of the last debates. He said to me, he's like, Andrew, you have as good a chance of winning this thing as I do. Um, if you win, I'm going to retire. If I win, you're going to be one of the first people I call. So get ready for that. Yeah.